It's an honor to have become an award-winning foreign faculty at Sung Kyung Wan University. I'm also very proud that I'm the first, uh, as far as I know, the first foreign faculty who received this award. Um, I must admit it has been quite a struggle over the past five years to find a proper teaching style that suits me and the students um, and fits into a modern academic environment with access to internet, with mobile phones, uh, social media all over the place. Um, we have more and more international students coming to this university and also the number of foreign faculty is increasing. So um, finding an appropriate teaching style is quite a challenge, but at the same time it is also necessary. So I see this award as a recognition by the university of my efforts in this field. Um, I think the most important part when preparing a class for me is to choose an appropriate amount of new material that I want to present to the students um, in order to keep the student fascinated instead of getting bored. I think when students show a tendency to get bored is where uh, the it's a dangerous place to bring new materials to the students. So you have to choose an appropriate amount that students remain fascinating. Um, one of the quotes that I like to mention in, in this context there is from uh, Victor Weisskopf from MIT. He used to be a physics professor at MIT who said about his lectures in class, um, that he doesn't want to cover a lot of material in class, but instead would like to uncover a few key ideas. And I think that is what mainly guides me in preparing for a proper class. I also think when you give students the proper tools uh, that they have the capabilities to work things out by themselves. Um, how to get additional knowledge um, via, from books or from internet or talking to friends. So focusing on the key ideas is probably more important than focusing on too many details. Um, so I think for the, as a preparation for my class, I want to pick the right key ideas which are meaningful for the students and I plant that as a seed and let the students flourish by themselves, hand it over to the students and let them discover the further details. My general physics course is part of the general education in the university college um, it is one of the so-called BSM courses, um, where BSM stands for Basic Science and Mathematics. Um, my general physics course, uh, in a very brief uh, summary, covers three main topics. We will explore the Newtonian dynamics, uh, then we will move on to uh, a brief discussion on thermodynamics and heat. And the second part of the course is mainly about electricity and magnetism. Um, what makes this course quite interesting uh, is that we have a variety of students in the class. Because it is the general education, we have students from not only physics, but chemistry, biology, uh, the various engineering uh, um, colleges, 
computer science, landscape architecture, and even medicine. So that is a big challenge, of course, with so many different types of students. But in fact, I see this also as a great opportunity because these students have different perspectives on, uh, on anything. Biology students look different at what they want to learn than computer science students or physics students or engineering students. And so if we see this as a challenge, I think these students can not only learn a lot from me, but also can learn a lot from each other. And so I see that as a, a very positive environment that we and I can use in the classroom. So what I then use as a, a suitable teaching method in, in this case um, is that I try to find a good balance of what kind of key topics I want to discuss in a class. I often try to use video or um, animation materials to make it more alive for the students, what, what I want to show them. Um, and then I would like to follow this up with one or two examples where I can demonstrate to the students how these ideas become some um, practical problems and also give them some examples of problem uh, solving um, skills by showing it to them as an example in the classroom. I then like to complete my lecture with a quiz that I ask the students to do as a team. And so as a, as a team, they have to think about how to solve the problem in the quiz and talk to each other um, to find a consensus or to find misunderstandings. And uh, they can talk to each other, ask me how to progress and solve the quiz question. So I think it's important that, especially in this quiz session, that students get engaged in the classroom activity, that they have an opportunity to practice in the class and discuss with other students um, how to solve a problem with their own perspective in mind. As I mentioned, the biology students look different at problems than computer science students. And so there is a lot to learn in that situation. Um, in fact, uh, I'm, I'm still in process of exploring how to make good use of this kind of uh, teaching tactics. Um, what, what is a good balance here? And ideally, I would like to reduce more my lecturing style and give more time to the students to have the classroom as a social environment where they can talk and discuss with their class members and individually can approach me and ask their personal questions, which I learned here is usually in a big classroom, students are not so eager to ask a question when the whole classroom is listening. And so in a smaller team environment, it's much easier to have students talk to me and discuss their problems and questions directly. Um, yeah, that summarizes more or less my general approach that I use in my general physics class. Well, if I, if I would qualify my teaching style with a, a few keywords, I would say I try to make my classes student-centered uh, as, as uh, opposed to the lecture-centered or instructor-centered. And uh, I, we, I want to, my students to be a bit uh, self-directed in their studies so that they decide when and what to study at a certain moment. Um, I think the comments that I get from some students uh, is that I may go a bit too far in this approach 
that they are not so comfortable with my student-centeredness and um, pushing them in choosing their own learning objectives. And I think that's mainly because the students in my class are mostly freshman students and they are unfamiliar with a teaching style that is different from the traditional instructor-centered teaching style. And so uh, their entire lives from elementary school to middle school to high school has been one and the same style, namely the instructor is at the center of everything. And I'm moving that center towards the students. So I think when students complain about my teaching style, it's rooted in, in, this, um, in this way of thinking. Now, fortunately, the number of students in this, what I would call opposition camp, is getting less. And so I think more and more students are now also appreciating and see the benefits of um, what I am doing. Uh, I'm not sure, but I suspect that students have some discussion on the um, social media of Sungkyungwan University and debate a bit on the good and the bad things of what I'm doing. And I have a feeling that the people are also defending my teaching style. And so I get less and less negative comments. Um, related to this question, I would like to mention um, uh, an, 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 another uh, related topic. And that's what I would call the conflict of interests between the instructor at one side and the student at the other side. Um, as an instructor, I'm, I'm interested in how much the students learn. And I'm also looking beyond the exam. I want students to learn something and keep that knowledge with them for many years to come and maybe the rest of their lives. Students have a different uh, look at this. They are mainly interested in the grade they get at the end um, and what, of course, in the end is their general, uh, what is that called, the GPA, uh, what, what is their short-term performance. And so this is a, a, a conflict in interest where the students look at the short-term results, whereas I'm interested in the long-term results. What can I achieve with the students for the many years they still have to use the knowledge that I teach them? Um, and so I think most of the comments that are from unhappy students is in this domain of conflicting conflicts. And that's a challenge. And I have to find a good balance between what is my student-centered approach in class and what the students have as their exam-centered approach uh, of the course. That's a difficult balance to find and I'm still trying to find good ways each time to keep the students happy and also keep myself happy of what I'm doing in my class. Well, I find that a difficult question. I, I don't really know whether students have really changed uh, in one semester. I don't think I'm the person in one class who can change students uh, so much. Um, I, can, I can show students that, that there is a different way of education than maybe what they usually experience. And in that sense, I hope my class to be a bit of a, an eye-opener to students that education can be different. Uh, than what they may have experienced so far. Um, I also like to show them by creating a nice atmosphere in class that learning can be fun and enjoyable and um, that the time in the classroom can be a, a joyful time where they can talk to others and talk to me 
uh, freely without feeling any stress or discomfort. Um, so I sometimes have students who come to me and say they had good opportunities in my class to make new friends, um, probably because I uh, team them up with other classmates and also I change the teams regularly so they have opportunities to meet other uh, class members which they otherwise probably would not have met or not have talked to and I get regularly positive comments uh, on that. Uh, yeah, I, I have students who I had one student who once came to me and said he thought physics always to him had been a very boring topic until he came to my class and physics turned out to be a very active and lively and very pleasant uh, topic. So I thought at least I one student that has changed during one semester coming to my class. Um, I have students who sign up for my class once and then I see them again the next semester. And when I ask them, they say, yeah, I, I appreciate that you're teaching science so much so that I wanted to come to your class again. So I think these are very memorable uh, occasions that I think, wow, it's good to hear that students enjoy my class and tell me so. Well, let me first say that um, Receiving this uh, teaching award at Sung Kyung Wan University uh, gives me the confidence that I should continue with my efforts that I've been doing in the past five years. Um, education is not an easy topic, especially making some changes in education. And so it has not always been easy and it probably won't be easy in the future. Um, therefore, I want to use this opportunity to also thank the, the, the researchers and co-workers at the Sung Kyung Wan Center for Teaching and Learning, which always have been a great support for me whenever I needed help or didn't know what to do uh, or wanted to discuss uh, issues and problems related to teaching and education. Uh, without the help of the Center for Teaching and Learning, I would never have reached the point where I am now. And so I, I also like to say then to all the other faculty at Sung Kyung Wan University who are interested in making a better or new uh, teaching methods, but who don't know where to start or what to do, to begin with contacting the people at the center and ask for help, because then you can make step-by-step -step, uh, improvements and get some guidance in what and how you should do improvements in education. Um, yeah, that's about it. Yeah.